you feel when you think of the ocean? Personally, the ocean makes me feel... I think the ocean makes me feel a lot of things. So what does it say mean to me? The ocean makes me feel small. Small. A little anxious. In a very physical way, not in like an insignificant way. It makes me just feel like I am tiny. That deep feeling of dread makes me feel alive. It's where the best adventures are, from massive fleets crossing the sea. Not being able to see or know what is on the other side of visibility. Not knowing what's below is scary as hell. Compared to everything else on this planet. Uh, in awe of the power of nature. To exploring the deep dark unknown. Makes me feel alive. I would even go as far as to say I'm pretty scared of it nervous and really kind of terrified is that normal the ocean can feel tranquil and calm as the breeze it borns it can also feel treacherous and hopeless as you stare down into the unknown depths of its abyss i mean it's just a load of water isn't it detecting multiple leviathan class life forms in the region are you certain whatever you're doing is worth it when looking deep into that infinite abyss it is nearly impossible to prevent your subconscious from summoning up thoughts of non-existent forms and imagining them swimming up to meet you from that endless void. Nothing instills more fear in me than the thought of a being larger than life slowly emerging from the deep in a space you cannot breathe, you can't run, you can't hide. Subnautica captures this fear Perfectly, It has managed to capture a childhood trauma of mine to perfection, and then some. Because in Subnautica, as you stare into the abyss, the abyss always stares back. Happy crack of week, everybody! <laughs> I am delighted and honored to be a part of such an incredible event. Oh my gosh. This is the very first year that this is happening and hopefully it'll be an annual thing thanks to the incredible organization of Ginny D and Pointy Hat. But I'm sure this is not the only Kraken video you've seen so far, but if it is, get ready to see many, many more from an explosion of amazing talent all over YouTube. Content creators are hopping on board this ship to give you a massive array of aquatic themed TTRPG content and I am so excited to be a part of this. I will be linking a bunch of these nautical themed videos in the description below. They are filled with brilliant ideas and free content sometimes and they will very nicely pair with this skill tree that I am serving up today in this video. So strap in and check your oxygen levels because we are diving deep into the Leviathan skill tree. I've made many skill trees on this channel before and if you want more details on how they work check out some of these videos right here. But to summarize I design a skill tree like this for example. Something I'm sure is quite familiar to anyone who plays video games. Final Fantasy, Baldur's Gate 3, The Witcher, Cyberpunk and hundreds more video games all have a similar leveling skill tree system like this one. When using it you start right here in the middle and make your way outwards from its center purchasing different abilities along the way. This creates a narrative of sorts for your progression, or in this case, an evolution. But ultimately, it gives you a bunch of freedom for customizing your characters and monsters, all the while providing a very sexy aesthetic structure for that journey. And in this video, I will be showing you how to create your very own mutating leviathan. But this skill tree is not just limited to monsters alone. But obviously lots of DMs are gonna use this to create some horrifying abomination for their players. But if you stick around till the end, I'll be showing you how to use this skill tree to create some seriously messed up characters. <laughs> Whoa, hey, I'm just busting in here to tell you to like and subscribe this video if you're enjoying it. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> So let's take a deeper look at this skill tree, what it provides and how to use it. Within this document included below in the description, you will find a base stat block for a mutating Leviathan. This creature is intended to have a challenge rating of around 20 or so, 
but for some of you, this might mean nothing, as the challenge ratings in D&D are a bit whack, uh, <laughs> to say the least. But in my opinion, this creature would be a formidable and terrifying threat for a party around level 15 or so. But if the party is on board a large seafaring vessel with cannons and a large crew, you could comfortably throw this at any party around level 10, or even lower if you want. It probably won't pose a massive threat to players the first time round. In fact, you kind of don't want it to. All you want to do here is shake up the players, scare them a little bit, and then have the Leviathan flee. Because this creature's main feature is its ability to mutate. As a DM, you're also free to mutate this creature beforehand and turn it into a massive abomination right from the get-go using this skill tree. But one suggestion I have is to have it start off as quite a simple threat and then slowly mold this creature over time. Consider having the creature first attack the party at earlier levels, but then flee as soon as it gets hurt. But then later have it return with new mutations, but still bearing the scars of their previous battle. And each time it survives an encounter with your party, have it return later, changed and improved. Keep in mind though that every new mutation you add to this Leviathan will probably increase its challenge rating by about two or something like that. <laughs> Listen, uh, Seor is an art form. It is not a science by any means. So I would probably say anytime you add a mutation to this, your players should probably be maybe one level higher to deal with it, but do whatever feels natural, whatever feels good. Most of the time you can throw a creature at a player's and they will always figure a way to get around that encounter, either be it running away or just being very strategic. And when choosing these abilities to give the creature, I recommend starting here in the center of the skill tree, giving it any of the mutations connecting back to this center space right here. Once you add a new mutation to this creature, you now open up new options, new mutations connecting back to any previously selected abilities. See it as like a series of doorways. Each time you purchase a new ability and add it to the monster, new abilities connecting back to that one get added to a list that you can choose from later on. Have fun and play around with it and let me know in the comments what kind of monstrosities you would make using this skill tree. And would you use the stat block for the basic mutating Leviathan here, or would you use a skill tree for a different monster? I'll teach you how to use it for different monsters later in the video. But remember, your greatest tool as a DM is setting a mood. It doesn't matter how many flashy powers and abilities you give this creature at the end of the day. What will truly instill fear and leave your players with a memorable and satisfying experience will be the narrative you tell. Make sure to take care in building up this monster beforehand. Try to show as little as you can for as long as you can. Because it's not the creatures in horror that make the experience scary, it's what the story leaves to the audience's imagination. Once the terrifying thing has finally been revealed, the story progressively gets less and less scary after that. So try to show what this creature can do without showing what this creature can do. Have the players encounter half-eaten whales or maybe corrupted fish. Or perhaps while the party is on a boat, it's simply bumped into ever so slightly by the Leviathan, but that bump alone completely turns the ship off its course. And maybe this small bump alone is enough to unsettle your players. But on that note of horror and building anxiety in your games, I also strongly recommend that you take a few moments to go through some safety precautions with your players beforehand. Within the document, I've also included some of my favorite safety and consent checklists that I use in my games. You're probably gonna see quite a few creepy adventures and the likes during Kraken Week. And so I just want to leave you with some precautions to take home with you. And I think this should always be done for any kind of horror themed adventures. Heck, it should be done for any kind of D&D game full stop. Make sure that everyone feels safe and comfortable beforehand because this is a game we all play for fun, after all. But now that we know how to set up our Leviathan, we're going to eventually want to reveal it and unleash a barrage of horrifying abilities on our players, right? So here are a few things on the skill tree that I think you'll have a lot of fun with. So if you're going to go for more of a Call of Cthulhu-esque adventure and 
really want to play mind games with your players and puppeteer friendly NPCs in the dead of night, check out the right side of this skill tree, in particular the top right corner. This is all about instilling fear, hypnotizing or even puppeteering players and other NPCs to attack one another on the monster's behalf. And this can be found right here in the Puppet Master ability. And speaking of, this ability says that it simply moves a creature and forces them to make an attack, but there's nothing stopping you from having an invisible tendril of the Leviathan slip on board in the dead of night and take over the captain, for example. But I would caution around taking over like a player character with this, but how terrifying would it be that your party not only had to fight a crazed pirate captain, but then later found out the Leviathan has been latched on to the bottom of their boat this whole time, toying with the minds of everyone on board. Another fun ability is Reality Break. So the way this works is essentially like a delayed blast fireball, but with the spell Reality Break. So whenever you become scared of the Leviathan due to its terrifying visage ability, you are left permanently scarred. And at some random point in your character's life, they will be subjected to the reality break spell as their PTSD bubbles to the surface and they lose their mind. I've even included a little table that you can have your players roll on after being frightened to determine what random point in time this fear will jump back to the surface and bite them in the ass. It could be a week, it could be a few hours, or even a whole year. Like, how crazy would it be if your campaign managed to last longer than an in-game year, and then suddenly, towards the very end, just as they're about to fight the big bad, this PTSD from long ago when they faced an equally terrifying threat bubbles up to the surface and they are attacked by the reality break spell out of nowhere. The mutating Leviathan can't hurt you. This is land. The mutating Leviathan can't hurt you. He's dead. This is- he can't hurt you. He can't hurt you. He's not real. And over here to the uh, left side of the skill tree, we have many ways for your Leviathan to get better at eating bigger things. And as it does, it begins to grow larger in size, eventually being able to destroy anything it just moves through when it gets the World Eater ability. And you could totally build an entire campaign around this premise alone. For example, imagine Jormungandr has been birthed into the world and the party have to track them down and destroy them before it gets big enough to eat the entire world itself. This is great! And you could go crazy with the descriptions too here. Have the party chasing its tail and then suddenly realize the head is directly behind them. <laughs> Get myself the shivers. And then obviously we have some ways over here to bump up its AC or even allow it to camouflage into its environments. Become incorporeal or straight up reflect spells back at the casters just like a Jurassic can. And like I said, don't feel limited to use this skill tree just on the stat block provided. Instead, have the tentacle abilities simply replace a creature's melee attack, which uses one of its limbs. Or change the damage type from its acidic glands or death cloud ability to fire or even cold damage. Make Stormbringer rain down meteor storms, go wild, unleash Ragnarok. But most importantly, just have fun. I just hope this skill tree serves as a beautiful sandbox of sorts, filling you with different ideas to alter and mutate your monsters. Just the idea of mutating monsters alone is so much fun. And also, like I said at the start of this video, you don't even need to limit it to being used on monsters. Players, share this video with your DM and ask if you can run, say, an all warlock campaign where you all need to continuously make sacrifices to a creature in the deep. And then, in return, they reward you with these incredible boons. Or consider even just having everyone start off with the cultist stat block, but you slowly grow in power, eventually being able to turn one of your limbs into a tentacle once a day. Or summon up storms, grow hardened scales of your skin, or even turn invisible. If you make characters for this, maybe they don't even level up in the conventional sense. Maybe you just gain one of these abilities on the skill tree every time you level up, but technically you're still level one, but just with super overpowered abilities that maybe you can use 
once per day. Let me know what you would use this skill tree for. Have you ever run a nautical adventure? And have you ever fought a sea monster? Or thrown a giant sea monster at any of your players? And how does the ocean make you feel? For me, I adore the ocean. I love swimming, I love being at the sea, but the deep ocean, that terrifies me. Hold up, we're gonna we're gonna have a little story moment before the end of this video. So come on, come here, sit down, bro. just take a load off, relax. I'm gonna share a personal experience I've had. Obviously, if you're not interested, there's timestamps and everything, so just skip ahead. But when I was nine years old, I was traveling through the Fijian Islands with my family and ended up winning a snorkeling trip in a limbo competition. The next day, my dad and I and several others went out on a speedboat and traveled out into the ocean for about half an hour or so until nothing existed beyond the horizon. There was no islands, no life, apart from the few who existed on this tiny little boat, which we were then asked to hop off of and into the dark looking waters below that looked cold and deep. But as soon as I hopped out, I was rewarded with this warm blue of the Pacific Ocean. And only a few arms lengths away from me was this beautiful Technicolor reef bursting with life. And we swam over masses of color. But then every now and then, all of a sudden, the reef would disappear from beneath us. And there was nothing left but the endless abyss below. Hundreds of miles of nothingness. Blue as far as you could see, and you had no sense of how deep that went. And for the first time in my life, I felt true dread. The thought that anything could swim up from that infinite void and drag me back down into the deep with it. <laughs> Dude, mermaids are terrifying. <laughs> I have a massive fear of mermaids. I know they're not real. Maybe they are real. And if they are real, they'll drag me straight down to the bottom of the ocean. There's nothing I could do. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you as well to every single one of my beautiful patrons out there who support me and allow me to create such fun and amazing stuff for you all. Genuinely, I can't thank you enough. You make my dreams a reality and it just means the world to me. So I'm sending out much, much love to all of you out there. Have fun with Kraken Week and make sure to check out the rest of the wonderful nautical videos in the description below. Also, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.